Hey there! Welcome to Learning Statistics with Dr. Amy Gates. Today our video is going to focus on examples of the three types of t-tests that you can use and our examples are going to be done in SPSS. Our first type of t-test that we're going to look at is called an independent sample means t-test. In this particular case we're going to compare two sample means to see if they are significantly different. In our example that we're going to see, we're actually going to look at the mean height of the male people in our sample, and we're going to see if that is significantly different than the mean height of the female people in our sample. So our null hypothesis is that our mean heights are not significantly different, and our alternative hypothesis is that our mean heights between males and females are significantly different. This is going to be a two-tailed test and we're going to use an alpha of 0.05. In this particular example, we're going to be grouping by gender and we're going to be comparing two independent sample means. Let's see how this looks in SPSS. In this particular data set that I'm going to be using for all these examples, we have all kinds of different data listed. We have the person's ID, their gender, their age, their height, and so on, all the way to the end of our data set where we even have pre-test and post-test scores for each of these people. Now in this particular first example, we're going to be looking at the height of our people. And we can even see that our data set might have some errors in it, but that is a possibility. So we're going to be looking at our height, and we're going to be grouping by gender, and we're going to be wondering, is there a significant difference in height between our genders? In order to test this, we're going to click on Analyze, and then we're looking to compare means, and because we have two samples, one male and one female that we're comparing, and these samples are independent, we're going to choose the independent samples t-test. Once we select this, we need to tell SPSS what variable we're going to be grouping by. In this case, I want to group using gender. In other words, I want one of my groups to be my males, and I want the other group to be my females. I have to define those groups for SPSS, and I'm going to scooch this over a little too, so we can actually see how they're named. All data sets are different. In this data set, the words male and female are actually used to describe male and female. But in some data sets, they'll use a 1 and a 2 or any other categorical naming system. So it's always good to check out your data set before starting to do analysis on it. Now when I define my groups, I know that my group 1 is actually called male with a capital M and my group 2 is going to be my females with a capital F. So I'm going to click continue and this tells SPSS that I want to group by gender. I want my first group to be male, my second group to be female, just the way it reads here on my data set. And what am I testing? Well, I'm testing height. So I'm going to move that over as well. This is all that SPSS needs to know. I'll click OK and then it'll bring up the results for this particular test. As we expected, our males are taller than our females. But the question is, is the difference statistically significant? And our results are listed over here. When we're comparing sample means, one of the first things we have to do is determine if we're going to assume equal variances or if we're not going to assume equal variances. SPSS performs an F-test for us and gives us the p-value of that F-test. Let's look at the results on the PowerPoint slides so we can see them better and determine what our results are for this particular example. So in this case, our first step was to determine if we were going to use equal variances. Whenever the p-value for the f-test is greater than our alpha value of 0.05, we can use equal variances. And so I've decided to use the top row of information, so my t-test value is 1.534, and my p-value for this t-test is 0.126. Whenever my p-value, which is two-tailed in SPSS, is larger than 0.05, we cannot reject the null because we did not fall into the rejection region. So that's how we find the results for each of our SPSS tests. All right, let's look at our second example. In our second example, we're actually looking at what's called a one-sample t-test. 
In this case, we're going to compare a single sample mean from our data to a known mean of a population. So we're kind of wondering, does our sample, um, is it different from the population mean that we know, or is it the same as the population mean that we know? So this is called a single sample t-test because we're only using one sample and we're comparing it to a known population mean. So our null hypothesis is that the mean of the population that we know is actually the same as or not significantly different than the mean of our sample. The alternative is that the mean of the population and the mean of our sample are actually significantly different. Again, we're going to use a two-tailed test and alpha is going to be 0.05. Now in this example that I'm going to show you in SPSS, we're actually given first that our population mean height of males and females overall is 62 inches. So if we just went all over the world and grabbed all the heights of adult males and females, our population is known to be 62 inches. So the question is, given that we know our population mean, is the sample that I've taken the same or different? And that's what we're going to look at here in the next example. Let's see how that works in SPSS. So we're back to the same data set, and in this case, we want to just compare all of the heights of all of our males and females, which is our sample, to that known population mean of 62 inches. When we click Analyze, we're going to again compare means but this time we're going to use the one sample t-test because we just have one sample that we want to compare to a known population mean. So let's choose that. Notice that it asks us for the test value. The test value is the known population value that we want to compare to. In our case that's 62 inches because that's what we were given in the problem. The test variable from our sample or our data set is the height. That's what we're actually looking at here to compare. So we're wondering, is our sample group of heights significantly different than our population height that we know? Once we tell SPSS these two values, we click OK, and it runs our test. In this case, we don't have to determine whether our samples come from the same variance or have the same variance because we have just the one sample that we're comparing to our population mean. So here's our results, and if you'll notice, our sample mean is 61.95. That's really close to 62. So we can almost guess that there's going to be no significant difference between our sample mean and the population sample mean. Let's look at the results. These results listed by SPSS give us the t-test value, which is actually quite small, it's very close to zero, and it gives us the p-value, which is quite large. Our p-value of 0.975 is well above our alpha value, so we most certainly cannot reject the null hypothesis. And that makes sense if we think about it, because the mean of our sample is almost identical to our population mean, so it certainly wouldn't be significantly different. And that's why we're not rejecting the null here. All right, let's look at our last example. In our last example, we're looking at paired sample t-test. Paired samples are samples that actually come from the same individual but have more than one collected value. For example, we might have pretest and post-test scores. So each individual in our sample will take a pretest and then they'll later take a post-test. So we'll have a pair of scores for each person in our sample. We could do the same thing with blood tests. We could have everyone take a blood test and then they could do maybe an exercise program to lower their cholesterol and then take another blood test. And again, those would be paired scores. In this case, we're trying to figure out, and that's a typo, that should say HA, we're trying to figure out if the sample mean of our pretest group is not really different from the sample mean of our post-test. And our research hypothesis, of course, that should be an HA, is that the sample mean of our pretest is actually significantly different than the sample mean of our post-test. Again, two-tailed, and alpha is 0.05. Let's see what this looks like in SPSS when we're working with paired data. 
Okay, so in this case, we're actually looking at pre-test and post-test scores. So each one of our, our people, or our students in this case, took a pretest and then later took a post-test. And then the second person, same thing, they took a pretest, later took a post-test. So these data elements are paired because these two are for one person, these two are for one person, and so on. But we still want to know, overall, did people do better on the post-test than they did on the pretest, for example? So let's analyze. Again, we want to compare the means, but in this case, we want to use paired samples because we know that our samples are paired up. So we'll click this option, and then it's really straightforward. We have to just tell SPSS what are the two variables we're pairing up? What are we looking at? In this case, we want to look at the pretest, that's our first variable in the pair, and our second variable in the pair is the post-test. We're only looking at one pair, so we don't have to go to number two or do anything here. These are the two variables we're looking at, and that's it. That's all SPSS needs to know. We click OK, and again it generates our results for us. We can look at the means quickly and see that the pretest is a 61.47. The post-test is a 100.65. Those numbers seem pretty different. We're going to guess that this is going to be a significant difference. But let's look at the results. Here our results tell us that our t-value is, is really hugely negative. If you imagine the rejection region, this t-value is all the way over on that left tail. It's very much rejected. And look at the p-value, it's zero. Zero is definitely less than 0.05, so we can absolutely reject the null, and we can determine that our pretest and post-test scores were significantly different. So this was a quick example of the three different t-tests that you can run, how to run them in SPSS, and how to interpret the results. Thanks for joining me.